was persuaded with the second time. But Ruth continued, twice, took two more times. Naomi is trying and telling Ruth, go back, go back. But Ruth says, Ruth was believing. She was committed to this mother. She was committed to knowing Naomi and to her God. This type of love for God and for others, our spouse, our precious relationships, is costly, it's hard, and calls for unconditional love. This evening, as we go through this, uh, may we search our own hearts, and may we allow the Holy Spirit to help us, and, and, and may the Holy Spirit challenge us into areas where there is deficiency as we keep moving on. There is current thinking that says, if I in the, in the inside the church, outside the church, you have this thing. If I, young people or uh, say, if I find the right one, the one I'm attracted to, my five senses are attracted to, the one who pushes my buttons, pulls my levers, but never mind what they believe, never mind whether they are Christian, whether they are worshippers, whether they are lovers of God. You should, the tendency is what matters is the kind of chemistry that exists between, the, between us. We'll work out this thing called worship later on, this church thing later on. This is thinking in the natural. But God blesses commitment over the long haul. Commitment to God is blessed by God. Young ones, single ones, I want you to hear the heart cry of your heavenly father. You know, in my younger days, um, this scripture, 2 Corinthians 6, 14 to 16, was like a law to me. It was read like a law and I read it again to others like a law. But as over years, I have heard, I have seen the cry of a heavenly father to his dear ones. 2 Corinthians 6, 14 to 16. Don't be mismatched with unbelievers. For what partnership is there between righteousness and lawlessness? Or what fellowship does light have with darkness? Next verse. What agreement does Christ have with Belial? What does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? Verse 16. And what agreement does God's house have with idols? For we are the sanctuary of the living God. And God has said, what has God said? God says, I will dwell among them, walk among them, and I'll be their God, and they will be my people. You know, that's the, that's the cry, the persuas persuasions of a loving Heavenly Father. Stay your course, stay your course. That's what He says, don't, don't wait, don't be mismatched. Be matched correctly, and because I want to be in your midst. I want to be your I want to be your God and I want you to be my people. It was wonderful, it transformed me completely when I saw that this is more than a law. This is the cry of a, of the lover of our soul. He says, Don't be mismatched. Getting back to the story, as a woman, at that time the women had no rights, no place. And being a widow, widow woman and now poor and a foreigner, Ruth had no claims on anyone in, in Israel. She was at the lowest rung of the social ladder. But God the Father had left a channel of blessing to her life. And that channel of blessing or grace was a man called Boaz. Boaz, a man who knew the Lord and sought with all his heart to obey the Lord's will. And the kindness, as you will soon see, that Boaz showed Ruth completely blew her over, astounded her. And Boaz went far beyond the requirements of the law and lavished amazing grace upon Ruth. Remember that there is a channel of grace that God has left in each one of your lives. Two weeks ago, one Thursday morning, we had a wedding of one of the caregivers of Rainbow House. Her name is Apsara. She comes from deep 
down south from Akuras uh, or beyond. And the, at the last JPP insurrection, she's the eldest in the family, and at the last insurrection, one night, some of the young men came, called her father out. And that was the last they saw of the father. And in the early hours of the morning, Apsara tracked the uh, footpath that her father was dragged away. And then she, when she went a little on, further on, she saw her father's body with the head decapitated. Caused such trauma in Apsara's life. She was the eldest. Life had stopped for them. She had two other sisters and two brothers. And Apsara went into a wavered lifestyle till Jesus met her. The only family in that village to meet with the Lord Jesus Christ. And then over time she came to be with us. And as years were going, when she was serving with us in the rainbow house, we could see she was getting restless, years were catching up. But, but the Lord had left a channel of blessing. One and a half years ago, she meets a young man by the name of Ravi. He is also from Mathura, came to know the Lord Jesus Christ. And Ravi was more than happy to take Apsara's hand. As we went through that marriage service, I said to myself, Dear Lord, you know how to keep a channel of blessing open for the least, for the, for the ones who are down the ladder of life. Be encouraged this evening. God is good. So let's journey through the scriptures. Ruth chapter 2 verses 8 down to about 12 I think. Let's read the scriptures together. Ruth chapter 2 verse 8. Yes. Then, now Ruth has, is now working in Bethlehem among the fields. They were poor. She was, she was looking for grain on a day-to-day -day basis to feed herself and feed her mother-in-law. And then she walked into this field that belonged to Boaz. And the Boaz was the owner and she was only a cleaner of the field. And here's Boaz speaking to Ruth. And he says, listen, my daughter, don't go and gather grain in another field. And don't leave this one, but stay here close to my young women. You find the many, many evidences of God's grace in the way Boaz is relating to Ruth. Boaz takes the initiative and spoke to Ruth. It, and it is you first thing. She says, listen my daughter. There's guidance there. She says, don't go and gather grain in another field. In every precious relationship, there's guidance. Value the guidance that you receive through your precious relationships. Don't cast them away. Because we will soon see that God honored the guidance that Boaz gave to Ruth. Then Boaz said to Ruth, don't go, don't go to glean in another field or leave this one. Keep close to my young women. And he told Ruth to continue gleaning in this field. And you know, they came during the time of the barley harvest. That was March to April. When we read the book of Ruth, we think these things happen over a day, over time, over a week. But this was over a longer period of time. Boaz is saying, stay, stay through the whole period that the barley harvest is on and into the wheat harvest, which is June to July. You know, and normally the cleaners in the law of God, there was a little, the corners were always kept for the poor and the widow, those who didn't have enough, and they were called the gleaners. So you had the harvesters, the reapers, they would reap, and once they move away out of the field and go to the next, it's then that the cleaners are entitled to go quietly behind and gather the little grain, corn, the girls that has fallen down, that they can gather. But in this case, he's saying, stay on with my, with my women workers. Stay with them. Don't go anywhere else. Stay alongside them. 
in these different ways you find Ruth, even as she was invited to work alongside the reapers, she, Boaz is providing Ruth beyond what was required by the law. The law only said, let the once the reapers go away, let them come and clean. But Boaz is saying, while my reapers are there, while you have protection, while you, there are others, then you keep cleaning during this time. Boaz guided Ruth in the way she should go. I, was, I have read this story so many times, but never saw the kind of incisive advice there is in the scripture from the mouth of Boaz. And Boaz is just the same way. And as a matter of fact, Boaz is a picture of our heavenly bridegroom. He's an Old Testament shadow of what Christ would be to each one of us. It's in the same way that Jesus guides his own. Proverbs 3, 5 to 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and don't lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Even as boys encourage you, we find 2, 10 to 13, Ruth 2, 10 to 13. Look, look at her response. The response of Ruth. Ruth 2, 10 to 13. She, this is Ruth. What did she do? The moment she was told, you know, don't leave this, leave this um, field. Stay there. She bowed with her face to the ground and said to him, why are you so kind to notice me although I am a foreigner? I want to ask you, Every time you get receive an encouragement from the Lord, every time a, a, a prayer has been answered, every time an impossible situation has been turned around, is there awesome gratitude coming out of your heart? You know, because when we get used to God, our love life with Him, it becomes familiar and we lose out on our first love for Jesus. This evening as you go through this story, may your first love for the Lord be renewed. Is that your response? Do you say a hearty thank you? Do you remember one year ago, two years ago, where I knew her and how God lifted you up? Do you remember five years ago what, how God lifted you up? Or have we when has the love for Jesus Wind the way out of our heart. May we recover warm love for Jesus this evening. You know, one week ago, I was away out of the country and Sunday morning I was getting ready, preparing the same message to, uh, to share with the church I was ministering in. And at 4.30 in the morning I was up and I'm praying and I received an email from my friends in the, in the morning congregation. They sent me an email saying, Marina has fallen down four floors and uh, she is in hospital. That was some great news. Immediately, but they followed with another message saying, nothing has happened to her. And as I came back, uh, came back to the country, first thing I did, first thing I did was to visit Marina. And when I went there, I couldn't believe my eyes. She had been climbing from the third floor of her house to the fourth rooftop where the water tanks are to clean it up. She's 57 years old and she on this ladder with broom in her hand. She's been used to doing that but this time something had corroded and the ladder gave way. As she found the ladder shaking, she came down fast and she tried to come down. But very soon the ladder gave way and tons he went four floors. And from the time that Ashanti had that leg injury, I have been praying that everyone will be spared of bone injuries, fractures, uh, different things. That God will not allow any child of God to be touched and on, on their feet. Because that's a blessing we receive from the cross. Christ, the, the prophetic word is that not a bone of his body be broken. And I have been claiming that. 
and Marina went down four floors. She was alone in the house. But the three dogs that she looks after alerted the neighbors. And the neighbors came to inquire why the dogs were barking like that. And as they peeped over the parapet wall, there was Marina. Marina